Spa Therapies, Part 1. This is an NCB TMB approved for continuing education hour online class. Welcome to this NCB TMB approved online distance learning class. My name is Denise Kajini. I'm a licensed massage therapist in four states and state certified in California and nationally certified in massage and body work since 2001. I have 20 years experience in therapeutic massage and body work and 15 years experience as a massage therapy instructor in the states of California and Missouri. In addition, I am a naturopath with 15 years experience at a wellness center in Missouri. Currently, my passion is teaching, having a private practice called Transformation Through Touch and working in the spa industry. How this online class works. You can take as long as you like watching this online distant learning class on Spa Therapies Part 1 for the Massage Therapist. When you are finished watching, send me an email at kajini.d at gmail.com if you have not received your final exam. When you have completed your final exam, email it back to me at kajini.d at gmail.com. I will grade the exam and when you pass with a grade of 70% or more, you will receive your Certificate of Achievement for this NCB TMB approved online Spa Therapy Part 1 for the Massage Therapist Distant Learning Class. If you have any questions, feel free to email me and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Now, sit back and relax and let's begin. Massage therapists have begun to add spa services to their repertoire, which can range from hot towels to scrubs to steam baths to body wraps. Clients enjoy these additional ways to relax and revive themselves. So what exactly is a body treatment? A body treatment is a blanket term for a whole gamut of different holistic, non-medical, physical procedures aimed at helping your clients achieve something specific for their body. A body treatment could involve all sorts of things. It might be a client is massaged or scrubbed with a particular oil, cream, or mineral. A client could be wrapped or enveloped in something, perhaps mud or seaweed or even plastic. Immersed or soaked in a liquid such as water or algae. Stroked treated with or exposed to something external like brushes, electrical current, or lights. The term body treatment referred to facials, massages, other related therapies, rubs, and any non-medical procedures that you go to a spa or a center to have. This continuing at presentation will cover body scrubs, body wraps, body polishes, body glows, dry brushing, and aromatherapy. The types of spas. Spas have evolved to include four basic types of facilities which offer their own signature treatments. They are the day spa, that's a spa that provides health, beauty, and therapeutic treatments with services varying by provider. Most are combined with a hair salon. As the name suggests, day spas offer their services on a day use basis where clients remain for a few hours or the day. Overnight accommodations are not available. The next type is a hotel or resort spa. These spas are owned by and located within a resort or hotel. Their facilities provide professionally administered spa services, fitness and wellness components, and spa cuisine menu choices. Then you have the destination spa. These facilities offer overnight accommodations, professionally administered spa services, physical fitness and wellness elements, educational programming, and spa cuisine to provide their guests with lifestyle improvement and health enhancement. 
And finally, there's the medical spa, which both provides medical and wellness care in an environment that integrates spa services. And these services are supervised under a medical doctor. Body exfoliation. Next, we'll look at the history and kinds of exfoliations in many spas today. The history of exfoliation is defined, first let's define exfoliation, and it's defined as the peeling and sloughing off of dead skin cells from the surface of the body. An exfoliant is the substance or process that removes these dead skin cells. Credit is given to the ancient Egyptians for their practice of exfoliation. In the Middle Ages, wine was used as a chemical exfoliant with a tartaric acid as the active agent. In Asia, the practice of exfoliation started hundreds of years ago. And the word exfoliate comes from the Latin word exfoliare, which means to strip off leaves. In many cultures around the world, salt, granulated pumice stone, and other natural ingredients have been used for centuries to stimulate circulation, cleanse, and exfoliate the skin. Let's take a look at the skin. The skin is the body's largest organ, and it serves as a protective barrier. The health and the surface appearance are determined by environmental factors as well as the function of the components that com compromise the layers below. So let's take a look at the structure. You have the epidermis and dermis are the two main layers of skin. They lie on top of a third layer called the subcutis. The epidermis, that's the thin outer layer of skin. It contains no blood vessels and relies on the dermis for its nutrients and waste removal. The epidermis is the thinnest on the eyelids and thickest on the palms of the hands and soles of the feet. The epidermis layer itself is made up of layers of cells, which are basal cells and squamous cells, that work together to continually rebuild the surface of the skin. The epidermis also includes two other types of specialized cells. You have the Langerhans cells, that's involved in immune response, and the Merkel cells, believed to play a role in making the skin sensitive to touch. The basal cell layer. This is the deepest part of the epidermis. This layer sits on top of the dermis. The round cells in this layer are called basal cells. Basal cells continually divide, producing new cells that undergo a maturing, a curtainization process as they push the older cells toward the surface of the skin. These older cells eventually become flattened squamous cells. Melanocytes are another type of cell found mainly in the basal cell layer. Melanocytes produce melanin, which is the substance that gives skin its color. When the skin is exposed to the sun's ultraviolet rays, the melanocytes produce more melanin. Melanin production helps protect the body by lessening the damage, damaging effects of the skin's sun's ultraviolet radiation. The melanocytes in the darkened skin people are more active, so more melanin is produced. Therefore, dark skinned people have more protection from the sun than light skinned people. Things like freckles and birthmarks and age spots are areas of the skin where melanocytes have produced more melanin than the surrounding skin. Then you have the squamous cell layer. The squamous cell layer is located above the basal cell layer and occupies the major part of the epidermis. The major cells in this area call keratinocytes. These cells contain a protein called keratin. Keratin is a tough substance that helps to protect the skin from injury. Keratin 
is also found in hair and nails. The keratinocytes mature and move toward the surface of the skin. They undergo gradual changes in composition and appearance. And shortly before they reach the surface, the cells die and take on a scale-like appearance. The surface of the skin is covered in dead cells, which are shed and replaced every three to four weeks by the newly divided cells in the basal cell layer, which will be pushed up. Then you have the dermis. The dermis is the second layer of the skin, beneath the epidermis. The dermis is the thickest of all three layers. It's made up of the papillary layer and a reticular layer. Collagen and elastin are produced by fibroblasts in the dermis to provide structure to our skin. Most of the skin's specialized structures are found in the dermis. That's where you'll find the blood vessels, the lymph vessels, hair follicles, sweat glands, sebaceous or the oil glands, and nerve endings. Then you have the subcutis. Beneath the dermis lies a fat layer known as the subcutis or hypodermis. This layer is made up mainly of fat tissue. It helps to conserve, conserve the body's heat and protect the organs of the body. Next, we'll look at the physiology of the skin. With regards to function, the skin has many functions, including protecting the body from heat, sunlight, injury, and infection. It helps to regulate body temperature. The blood flow to the skin surface allows the heat to escape to the air and helps to maintain a constant body temperature. And then you have sweating, which allows the body to regulate its temperature. Sweating does not occur until the core body temperature is greater than 37 degrees Celsius. Helping to control fluid loss is another function of the skin. The skin prevents the body from losing water and electrolytes. Yet, as a balance, water is continually evaporating from the skin surface. Another function, getting rid of waste substances through the sweat glands. And with regards to sensation, nerve receptors in the skin monitor the environment by sensing cold, heat, pain, and pressure. These nerve receptors are more concentrated on our fingertips. And the skin also is involved with storing water, fat, and vitamin D. Understanding your skin. New skin cells are created in the skin's lower layer, layer the dermis. And over time, cells migrate to the surface of the skin and become more acidic. During their approximate 30-day journey, they die and become saturated with keratin. Keratin is important because it protects the skin from outside elements. Through the aging process and after menopause for women, the natural process of skin erosion becomes uneven, which gives skin a dry and rough character. Exfoliation removes the outer layer to reveal the newer skin beneath. This shedding of the outer layer unclogs pores, keeps skin clean, and helps to reduce acne outbreaks. Exfoliation should always be done after cleansing the skin. And exfoliation is important for men as it exposes the hair follicles, allowing a better shave. It's possible to over exfoliate which can dry and irritate the skin. And the face is the part of the body most sensitive to exfoliation. Hence, provided that exfoliation causes the skin to dry out, it's very important to moisturize it because dry skin can lead to wrinkle development. So why do we exfoliate? Taking care of your skin is critical to looking your best and to fight the war on aging. 
An important part of the skin care routine is professional exfoliation. If you are already a subscriber to the idea of exfoliating, then you know that winter, along with its dry indoor air and harsh outdoor conditions, is the best time to exfoliate. Consider the fact that your skin is not only the largest organ of your body, but also one of the most delicate. Now consider the daily and seasonal abuse you're exposed to. From diet to perfumes to skincare products, harsh conditions, artificial light, pollution, and so forth. These can all wreak havoc if you don't care for your skin carefully and regularly. So why is exfoliation important? Very few people realize that the top layer of their skin is entirely made up of dead skin cells. Exfoliation removes dead surface skin cells, which helps reveal the more luminous, younger looking skin beneath. Are you covered with dense, dead skin cells? Absolutely. And they've been dead for at least a month. Our body will naturally shed millions of dead skin cells every day, allowing for new ones to travel to the surface as the old flake off. But the process is slow. And as we age, it gets even slower. And the buildup we accrue from the dead skin cells remain on the surface creates a substance called keratin, which is the body's natural process of protection. So do we need dead skin cells to protect us from the elements? Sure, but it's the buildup of this protection which is counterproductive. So without regular exfoliation, we will accumulate an abundance of dead surface skin cells, which create clogged pores, discoloration, and aging. The most common complaint is dull, lifeless looking skin. It's recommended to have a professional treatment of a minimum of four times a year to keep the skin looking vibrant. An added benefit is that regular exfoliation stimulates skin cells and increases natural oil production and blood flow, giving you a more youthful appearance overall. So some of the benefits of exfoliation for your skin are many. There are so many excellent reasons to exfoliate your skin, from getting softer skin to getting the closest shave possible, to helping your body get rid of dead skin cells and reveal smoother, softer skin. If you're not convinced on the benefits of exfoliating your skin, keep on with the next slides for seven great reasons to exfoliate. So let's go over each main benefit of exfoliating your skin. Benefit one, it will improve skin texture. Exfoliating keeps the skin soft and glowing. One of the many benefits of exfoliating your skin starts with improving its texture. If your skin feels rough or dry, exfoliating your skin is an easy way to revive dull, dry skin. I'm sure you've experienced that magical feeling when you've exfoliated your face or arms and you're left with super smooth skin. So make sure you exfoliate on a regular basis to keep, keep smooth skin and help beauty products look even better. With regards to dry skin, our skin is very often dehydrated, especially during the winter months. We load up on heavy creams and skincare products to combat this process but dry skin means that dead cells actually prevent your skin from absorbing these products. So removing the dead skin cells a few times a year and moisturizing the new skin cells results in a soft, supple skin all year round. And with regards to smoother skin, our skin is made up of many microscopic layers of cells, but only the deepest level, called the dermis, contains living cells which are smooth and radiant. These cells give us our youthful appearance, so by exfoliating the dead, dry skin cells, you're better able to reveal that healthy glow. Benefit two, getting a closer shave. We all know that shaving with a dull razor is a problem. Well, 
Shaving dull skin is a big beauty mistake also. If you want to get the closest shave possible, always exfoliate your skin beforehand. This will get rid of any dead skin cells that can potentially clog up your razor blades. And after that, you'll have a smooth, clean shave. Benefit three, fighting the signs of aging. Another terrific skin benefit of exfoliating your skin is to fight the signs of aging. As we get older, our skin's natural ability to shed dead skin cells slows down. Dead and dull skin cells often make fine lines, wrinkles, and dry skin stand out even more. Help your skin age even more gracefully by exfoliating regularly and shedding those dead skin cells. Rot routine exfoliation leads to visibly brighter skin and helps keep fine lines and wrinkles in check. Exfoliating treatments to slow the aging process, but postmenopausal women will benefit the most from this. After menopause, the natural process of shedding dead skin and rejuvenating new skin cells becomes slower. In addition, keratin-filled dead cells build up quicker and more unevenly once we reach middle age. Exfoliation accelerates the process, evens out your skin tone, and makes your skin look healthier and younger. Benefit four helping to prevent breakouts. Buffing the dead skin away will keep your pores from clogging, which keeps acne under control. If you've experienced blackheads, whiteheads, or breakouts, exfoliating your skin will help keep pores clean and unclogged. When your pores get clogged up with dead skin cells, oils from your skin can get trapped beneath the surface, causing pimples. Exfoliation helps keep acne under control by keeping pores clean and clear. Improving acne. Most acne products dry out the skin. While effective in destroying the bacteria that causes acne, these products are harsh and counterproductive, creating an excess of dry skin, which then acts as a barrier trapping oil in the skin and starting a new cycle of breakouts. With regards to clogged pores, contrary to belief, clogged pores or blackheads and whiteheads aren't caused by poor hygiene. Most commonly, they're caused by misuse of products that trap excess oil and keratin in the skin. Exfoliating is necessary to remove the dead surface cells and release excess oils and keratin. Benefit five evening out skin tones. The removal of dead skin cells helps with skin discoloration or uneven tone. Having an uneven skin tone is one of the many skin concerns of women these days, but we actually have a powerful weapon to fight against an uneven skin tone. Another one of the skin benefits of exfoliating is that it can help remove leftover dirt and makeup, as well as layers of dead skin to reveal bright new skin that's hiding underneath. Benefit six, helping skincare products penetrate deeper. There's nothing worse than spending your hard earned money on quality skincare products and finding that your skin isn't getting any benefit from them. If you're experiencing this yourself, don't be too quick to blame the product. If you have layers of dead skin cells pile up, the skincare products might not be able to penetrate your skin. Exfoliating regularly will help your skincare products get a chance to really sink in and work on your skin. Exfoliating speeds up your skin's natural renewal process and helps your moisturizer penetrate into the skin deeper. Exfoliation helps your makeup go on smoother. Does your foundation make your skin look rough, dry, or cakey? Exfoliating removes the dry dead cells that enhance imperfections or cakey looking makeup.
When your skin is properly exfoliated, you don't need as much makeup or heavy foundations to create the illusion of smooth skin. You'll already have a smooth base to begin application. And exfoliation helps your skincare products work, work better. The largest benefit of regular exfoliation is how vibrant your skin looks afterwards. But few realize that exfoliation does for their daily beauty routines. As a woman, you know there are thousands of skincare products that promise you all kinds of results. But without exfoliating regularly, you're simply applying these products to dead skin, adding to the buildup of keratin. Exfoliate regularly and your skincare products will be able to penetrate and give you the results that you are looking for. And benefit seven, exfoliating your skin is essential if you use spray tans or cream tanning lotions. As mentioned previously, exfoliating helps your skin to better absorb products, but will also give skin tanning products a smooth, clean canvas, which allows for a more even and longer lasting tan overall. Exfoliating your skin is one of the key steps in a good skincare regimen. Remember, there are three types of exfoliation. You have manual, enzyme, and chemical. If your skin doesn't like traditional skin scrubs, you might want to look at doing an enzyme exfoliation, which involves no scrubbing or chemical exfoliation, which uses acids. Let's look at each one of these separately. Healthy skin doesn't have to come from an expensive medical process. In fact, simply adding an exfoliating product to your skincare routine can bring an end to dull, flaky skin and help you put your best face forward. As we stated before, exfoliating removes dead cells from the uppermost layer of the skin to reveal the fresher, younger skin underneath. Sloughing off these dead skin cells can even skin tone, remove pore clogging dirt and oil, and help prevent acne. There are several different types of exfoliants. You have soap and cleaners to remove dirt and oil from the skin, but soap can't remove all of the dead cells on its own. That's where exfoliation comes in. Exfoliating tools like gloves and loofahs are one option for physical exfoliation. However, loofahs should be used only on the body because they're too harsh to use on delicate facial skin. Exfoliating soaps allow you to both cleanse and exfoliate your skin at the same time. Many of these soaps are made with natural ingredients like oatmeal, salt, sugar, or finely ground seeds. Both these natural ingredients and synthetic exfoliating beads, which are found in many facial cleanser and body washes, work as physical exfoliants to remove dead cells from the skin surface. Products that contain chemical exfoliants like alpha hydroxy acids or salicylic acid should be used less frequently. Although they are effective exfoliation for the skin, they can also cause dryness and irritation. The other types of exfoliants are chemical enzyme to dissolve exfoliant. Chemical exfoliation such as alpha hydroxy acids or beta hydroxy acids, salicylic acid are found in commercial products. Other exfoliants found in nature are Malic acid, which is found in apples, tartaric acid found in grapes, lactic acid in dairy products such as milk, cream, and yogurt, glycolic acid in sugar and sugar cane. And then you have physical scrubs such as oatmeal, salt, citric acids, and citrus fruits. When these acids are applied to the skin, they loosen the keratin that holds skin cells together, allowing the cells to be easily sloughed off. Papaya, which has papain, and pineapple, which has bromelain, 
also contain enzymes that are effective at exfoliants. Because they are non-acid enzymes, they are considered the safest for sensitive skin, unless there is an allergy to these. Manual exfoliation, dry body brushing. Manual exfoliation can be done using many different tools and substances, depending on the level of abrasion needed. Exfoliation uses brushes or fiber tools, which are known as dry brushing or body brushing. Other manual exfoliation tools that can be used for dry brushing include loofahs, nylon mitts, Sisal mitts, sisal is a coarse fiber, and other abrasive cloths depending on the level of abrasion desired. Body brushing uses the gentle massaging action of a dry, natural bristle brush, is an easy way of stimulating the circulatory and lymphatic system, and helps to eliminate toxins from the client's body. The elimination process of the body can become more effective, not only improving the appearance of the skin, but also giving general health benefits, such as improving blood circulation and the immune system, improving the appearance of cellulite and reducing water retention, leaving the skin firmer and smoother as a result. Dry body brushing is often done in spas as part of a detoxification and slimming treatment program. Dry skin brushing exfoliation. A dry brush exfoliation involves the use of a soft, dry brush to gently brush the skin. In alternative medicine, it's sometimes recommended by holistic practitioners to remove dead skin cells, which will improve circulation and enhance detoxification via the skin. The gentle pressure is also thought to have a calming effect. Skin is said to be the largest organ of elimination. Alternative medicine practitioners use skin brushing, a technique involving gently brushing skin with a soft natural bristle dry brush. Skin brushing is believed to enhance elimination by removing dead skin cells and enhancing the circulation of blood and lymph. Skin brushing is simple, but you don't want to brush over broken, weakened, irritated, or infected skin, and you always want to avoid the face. For personal self-care, skin brushing can be easily incorporated into a daily routine if done before showering or bathing. The dry skin brush procedure. Sessions can range from 20 10 to 20 minutes. And here's how it's done. The dry skin brushing is as easy as it sounds. All you need is a dry skin brush or loofah like the one pictured. Using a soft bristled natural brush is ideal for the skin. The brush you use on your hair is not what you'll want to pick because many hair brushes have synthetic bristles which are too sharp for the skin. The best time to dry brush is right before you bathe or shower while you're completely undressed. Start brushing at your feet and brush in the direction of your chest to follow the flow of lymphatic fluid. Then you go to the fingertips and brush up to the shoulders toward the chest. Use small strokes and light pressure. You use strokes that are short and brisk and directed upward toward the primary lymph nodes to assist lymphatic drainage. Circular brush strokes can be used on the soles of the feet, palms and hands, and on the joints. And linear brush strokes are used on the limbs, the back, the abdomen, and upper chest. And you, again, you'll want to avoid the face and head. You rub the bristles over the body using gentle circular motions. You take your time and pay careful attention to not miss an area. Dry skin brushing should not be painful in the least, so if it is painful, lighten your touch and speed to the client's tolerance level. You'll be surprised how little pressure you need to get results. When you're completely finished, 
The client will go in the shower and give the skin a good washing to get rid of the dry skin cells that you brushed off. The massage therapist will moisturize after showering. So we'll go through this five-step process of dry brushing again. The only tool you need is a dry skin brush, preferably one with natural bristles or a loofah. So step one, you'll stand in the shower with the water off. Starting at your feet, start brushing in small circles towards your heart. Apply very light pressure, avoiding broken skin, skin rashes, or areas of the skin that are thin, such as the face or the inner thighs. After you've finished with both legs, move on to your arms. Brush from your fingertips again toward your heart. Reach around and brush from your back toward your stomach. And step five, when you're finished, begin showering. Dry skin brushing tips after the spa visit. Using a long handle brush so that you can reach all parts of your body. You want to apply a light body oil after brushing while your skin is still damp from the shower, which will give your skin the perfect amount of hydration without feeling heavy. It's safe to do this every day, but watch your skin. If you feel that every day is too much, step it back to every other day or every third day. Some areas of your body might still benefit from a stronger exfoliator once a week, such as your feet, your knees, and your elbows. The benefits of full body dry brushing. A full body dry brush can be done for any or all of the following physiological effects. It can be done as an exfoliant, which removes the dead skin cells, as a vasodilator, which increases local blood flow, as a stimulant, which invigorates the whole body and promotes movement of the digestive tract and stimulates lymph flow and as a tonifier, which strengthens vitality and the immune system. Some indications that would suggest dry skin brushing are, is needed would be if you're needing exfoliation, if you have low vitality, if you've been feeling fatigued, or if you have constipation. The contraindications for dry skin brushing is if you have any type of skin irritation, if you have a rash, if you have a sunburn. Clients should be made aware that there is a higher chance of getting sunburned after having an exfoliation treatment. Contraindication is for contagious skin condition. You don't want to use a dry brush with athlete's foot. Only the feet would be contraindicated. The rest of the body could be dry brushed. If a person's had a recent tattoo, or if the area has been shaved 24 hours prior to the treatment. Dry brushing and all manual exfoliation methods actually help stimulate the flow of lymph in the superficial vessels by physically encouraging the movement of lymph toward the lymphatic vessels. This clears the way for more interstitial interstitial fluid to enter the lymphatic capillaries. Superficial lymphatic vessels are close to the surface of the body. Therefore, dry brushing strokes applied to the extremities, face, neck, and upper chest are done lightly. Strokes on the abdomen and back can be applied with more depth to help stimulate the flow of lymph. Lymph flows in one direction, so the strokes from dry skin brushing and other manual exfoliation techniques travel along the pathway of lymph flow. In the extremities, the strokes are performed toward the client's heart. Strokes on the face, neck, and upper chest are performed downward. The abdomen and back strokes are performed in a clockwise direction, then up each side to the center of the abdomen and back strokes are performed downward from the neck and shoulders to the mid-back, then from the lumbar area up to the mid-back.
What is palotherapy? It's defined as the therapeutic use of muds, clays, peat, earth, salt, paraffin, and stones. Pilo is Greek for mud. In the next section on scrubs and wraps, we will explore the therapeutic uses for the multitude of substances that make up the Earth's crust and dissolved in the Earth's waters. Muds, peats, and clays have been integrated into cultural healing tradition for centuries. Salts have always been important to the health of the body. Early on, sources of salt were highly prized for both flavoring food and for external application to the body. Stones were discovered to have curative powers through their ability to absorb heat and cold, and these thermal aspects were then applied to the body. Stones will be explored more fully in another four-hour online continuing ed class called Spa Therapies Part 2. Medicinal clays. Palotherapy is the use of natural clay from the earth for therapeutic purposes. Most are familiar with palotherapy in the form of facial mud masks, but the applications include any form of external poultices and even include the ingestion of clay. Basically speaking, when activated with moisture, clay has a unique drawing capacity which provides its detoxifying benefits. It's useful to understand a little about the three primary actions or properties of clay. The first property of clay is absorption. The capacity to bring elements inside the molecular structure of the clay and hold on to them. This process is complex to describe, but it's due to the single bond between silicon and aluminum. This bond is responsible for the electrical appearing on the internal and external molecular surfaces. The structure of the basic silica, tetrahedra, creates a negative charge on the external surface. This polarity attracts cations, most of all polarized water molecules, through their catatonic entity, in addition to water. Clay absorbs molecules and hydrocarbons. This property explains how clay is used to reduce certain types of swelling or tumors, drain abscesses and cysts, and cleanse in general. The next property is the capacity to attract elements to the outside of the molecular structure of the clay and there hold on to them. The process is similar to absorption except that the bond is created on the external surface instead of the interior. This capacity increases the ability of clay to bind larger toxins and microorganisms. This process is called adsorption. Finally, the last property of clay is ionic exchange. This is the capacity to alter the electrical charge of a contacted surface. Clay is continually interacting with the surrounding environment. It's known that ions exchange from the clay to the environment in a non-predictable yet measurable way. It's this non-predictable because specific environmental variations cannot be fully comprehended and therefore the specific exchange cannot be predicted. The cationic exchange capacity is responsible for the balancing effect of clay and is one of the most unique and beneficial therapeutic factors. We will now explore body scrubs. A body scrub is a popular body treatment that is like a facial, but for the body. It exfoliates and hydrates your skin, leaving it smooth and soft. A body scrub is a procedure that uses a coarse, grainy substance known as an exfoliant. The word glow is often used to describe the scrub because of the way the skin glows during and immediately after the procedure. 
A body scrub is done with an abrasive material like salt, sugar, coffee grounds, rice bran, even pecan hulls, which are usually mixed with some kind of massage oil and an aromic-like essential oil. If the scrub uses salt, it might be called a salt scrub, salt glow, or sea salt scrub. The exfoliation is usually followed by a shower and an application of body lotion. This is not a massage. What happens during a body scrub? The body scrub usually takes place in a wet room, which has a tile floor and a drain. The therapist may offer you disposable underwear and leave the room. You will start face down on the massage table that is covered with a towel, a sheet, or a thin piece of plastic, or on a special wet table with a Vichy shower overhead. In that case, you won't have to get up to be rinsed off. The therapist will return and start by gently rubbing the exfoliant on your back, the back of your arms, and the back of your legs and feet. You may be draped with a towel so only the part he or she is working on is exposed. Then you turn over and the therapist does the other side. When the therapist is finished, you usually step into a shower to rinse off. You want to be sure to rinse thoroughly so that you don't take little granules back to the table. If the spa is doing the treatment on a wet table, the therapist will either rinse you off with a handheld shower or turn on a Vichy shower. Vichy showers and all other hydrotherapy techniques will be explored in our NCB TMB approved for continuing our online spa therapy part two class. If you step into the shower, the therapist will put clean sheets on the treatment table while you're showering and step out of the room again. You dry off and lie face down on the treatment table underneath a sheet or towel. Then the therapist returns and applies body lotion or oil. Some spas do body scrubs in a room without a shower and removes the exfoliant with steamed towels. You can get a body scrub on its own, but it's often the first step in a body wrap, often a seaweed or mud wrap or other signature treatments. You can also combine a body scrub with a massage, but you want to get the body scrub first because it's stimulating, whereas the massage calms you down. Some spas have signature treatments that combine both body scrubs and massage. Salt and other exfoliants can be abrasive, and some therapists may have heavier hands than others. Individuals also differ in their skin sensitivity. So if it feels too harsh, speak up. Next, we'll look at the different types of body scrubs available. The salt scrub. A salt scrub is probably the most popular body treatment at the spa. You can also buy ready-made salt scrubs or make your own salt scrub at home. A salt scrub's primary purpose is to exfoliate your skin, removing the outermost layer of the dead skin cells and leaving your skin softer and smoother. The riches from the Dead Sea and the therapeutic benefits of bathing in the Dead Sea have been known for centuries. The salts from the Dead Sea are unique because of their high concentration of mineral salts as compared to ordinary sea salts. In the ordinary sea water, Sodium chloride is the primary cons constituent, accounting for 80% of its composition. The dead sea salts contain a considerably smaller percentage of sodium chloride, with the balance coming from magnesium, potassium, and calcium, as well as high concentrations of bromide and iodine. It's believed that the therapeutic benefits of the dead sea come from these other mineral salts. These salts are amazing for clearing skin disorders like acne, eczema, and psoriasis. Also in many states, they allow people without a massage license to give salt scrubs and other body treatments. 
This means a client might get someone still in school or an esthetician who is more skilled at facials. I recommend a client ask if they're getting a licensed massage therapist when they book a salt scrub. The salt scrub procedure usually takes place in a wet room equipped with a shower. The scrub is generally a blend of sea salt, sweet almond oil, and some aromatic essential oil like lemon, lavender, or mint. As the client, you are either lying on a massage table covered with a towel or sheet or a thin piece of plastic, or you're lying on a wet table that has a shower attached to it. As you lay on your stomach, the therapist rubs the salt scrub gently over your skin. The abrasiveness of the salt removes the dead skin cells. Then you turn over and the therapist exfoliates the other side. If they rub too hard, be sure to let them know. When the therapist is finished, you may be asked to step into a shower or to rinse off all the salt. Don't use soap or shower gel because you want to keep the oil and the aromatics on your skin. If the spa is doing the treatment on a special wet table, the therapist will either rinse you off with a handheld shower or turn on a Vichy shower, which is a special six-headed shower that is parallel to the table. After you dry off, the therapist applies a lotion, but don't expect a full massage unless it's part of a longer signature treatment. Often, it's called a ritual or journey, which involves a scrub, a wrap, and a massage. You can get a salt scrub on its own, but often it's the first step in a body wrap, often seaweed or mud. That's because exfoliation prepares the skin for products like seaweed or algae that detoxify the body by stimulating circulation through the vasodilation of blood capillaries. You can also combine a salt scrub with a massage. Get the salt scrub first because it's stimulating, whereas the massage calms you down. Salt is fairly abrasive, and some therapists have a heavier hand than others. So individual also differ in their skin sensitivity. So it's important that you ask your client or if you're having one yourself to speak up if it's too hard. The next type of scrub called a sugar scrub. It's one of the gentlest of all the different types of body scrubs, which can also be done with coffee grounds or rice bran. A sugar scrub is a good choice if your skin is extremely sensitive or if you had a salt scrub before and found it scratchy or uncomfortable. Sugar scrubs for more sensitive skin are widely accepted, thus it gives a gentler exfoliating experience without the salty sting. The granules are smaller and gentler and contain glycolic acid, which support cell turnover, fights bacteria that causes acne, and heals sun damage. A sucrose-based exfoliant with shea butter can give you the ideal balance for your radiant skin. For an extra strong exfoliation, search for body scrubs with clay, pumice rock, or grounded shells since they do amazing things on the skin too. Sugar is a natural way of moisturizing, absorbing moisture from the environment and deposits it on your skin. It's a humectant, leaving it feeling hydrated and conditioned. A sugar scrub hydrates your skin because the sugar is combined with oil and often an aromatic and uplifting essential oil like lavender, rose geranium, or grapefruit. The sugar scrub is followed by a shower either a stand-up Swiss shower or a lay-down Vichy shower at a spa. Once your skin is dry, the therapist applies body lotion, leaving your skin soft and fragrant. Because a sugar scrub is not as abrasive as salt, you may not get as thorough an exfoliation. The sugar scrub procedure is that takes place in a wet room depending on the spa. As you lie on your stomach, the therapist rubs a mixture of sugar, 
oil and aromatics to your skin, usually starting with your back. Then you turn over and the therapist exfoliates the other side. Usually your body is more exposed during a sugar scrub than during a massage, so you have to be comfortable with that. You might have a towel beneath, between your legs like a diaper and a folded towel over your breasts. When the therapist is finished, he or she will leave the room and you'll step into the shower to rinse off all the sugar. But again, don't use soap or gel. It's good to keep the oil and aromatics on your skin. If the spa is doing a treatment in a special wet table, the therapist will either rinse you off with a handheld shower or turn on a Vichy shower. You can get a sugar scrub on its own, but it's often the first step in a body wrap. That's because exfoliation prepares the skin for products. If the body wrap calls for a salt scrub, you can ask if they can substitute a sugar scrub for sensitive skin. You can also make your own sugar scrub at home by combining sweet almond oil, sugar, and a few drops of a high quality essential oil. This recipe for a salt scrub can be easily adapted to make your own sugar scrub at home. Herbal body scrubs. Another type of body scrub is the herbal category. The possibilities and recipes for the herbal body scrub are many. It really depends on your client's personal preference as to what you can use to make the perfect herbal body scrub for your client. A few examples are orange peel and lavender flower. Each of these have unique scent and healing or relaxing qualities. Mixing the right herbs together with the right essential oil will help you create a heavenly experience for your client. And each spa has their own signature blends. Aromatherapy body scrub. The term aromatherapy is attributed to a French cosmetic scientist named René Getfoss. As he worked in his lab in the early 1920s, he severely burned himself. In order to cool the pain, he plunged his arm into the only cold substance around, which was a vat of lavender essential oil. The burns healed rapidly with little scarring and a new science was born. He dedicated the remainder of his life to the study of aromatherapy, or the healing power of scented healing oils. Modern research has indicated that certain essential oils and herbs do indeed have therapeutic and healing properties. Lavender is still used for burn victims, and the scent is widely used to treat depression and anxiety. Aromatherapy body scrubs that include essential oils can be calming or invigorating as needed. Users should always take appropriate caution when selecting a scrub as they may be sensitive to one or more of the ingredients. A coffee body scrub. Using coffee in a body scrub has become quite common and it is used for its unique qualities. Coffee is a natural stimulant and it is great for use on cellulite prone areas. Many spas use coffee in conjunction with other therapeutic and stimulating materials. Like when you add vanilla, chocolate and other oils and scents, you find it even more enjoyable. Moisturizing body scrubs. A common skin problem is the lack of moisture or dry skin. If you're one of the millions who have that problem, a moisturizing body scrub can help. There are many options to making a body scrub that moisturizes, including using oatmeal or ground almonds with yogurt or aloe vera. No matter what type of body scrub you choose from the spa or decide to make at home, be sure you are aware of all of the ingredients. This is particularly true if you have sensitive skin or have allergies. Some body scrubs can be too harsh on sensitive skin. Scrubs for dry skin. If you have inflamed and dried up epidermis, it's advisable to use oatmeal body exfoliants. 
oatmeal is not a powerful exfoliation, but its organic qualities quench dried out skin layers to make it smoother and tender, which is more effective as a facial treatment for delicate facial skin. People who suffer from dry skin may like coconut scrubs because they tend to also have coconut oil, which is a highly regarded as a moisturizer. Other people may not like the scent of coconuts or may be allergic. They may find that other scents and ingredients work better for their skin type. People with sensitive skin, for example, may only be able to use an unscented exfoliating body scrub, which will likely only include a short list of mild natural ingredients. Furthermore, most body scrubs have moisturizing ingredients to restore your skin after extensive rubbing. However, for those who have dried out skin, you can search for a body scrub with powerful moisturizing ingredients. Some ingredients that are used in exfoliation products for one part of the body may be too harsh for another. The feet, for example, have very tough skin. The feet are also subject to more pressure than other body parts, such as the arms or thighs. Many companies offer exfoliating products that are specifically designed for the feet. These may contain mint or eucalyptus, which can relieve aches and eliminate odors but are often too harsh for other areas of the body. On the other end of the spectrum, the lips are very delicate. They do, however, tend to get dry and crack. Layers of dead skin on the lips can attract negative attention. There are exfoliation products specifically designed to address the lips and other sensitive areas of the body. The benefits to body scrubs. Many women are overloaded with a perpetual to-do list and often put themselves at the bottom of that list. One way you can put yourself at the top again is to engage in self-care by getting regular body scrubs. There are various types of body scrubs depending on your personal preferences and needs. There are also various benefits to body scrubs, some of which may not even be aware of like the body scrubs exfoliate your skin, remove the dead skin cells, and promote the, gro promote the growth of new ones. Body scrubs include moisturizing ingredients which leaves the skin smooth, healthy, and glowing. The process of scrubbing also stimulates circulation and the movement of lymph, helps to fight cellulite, and improve skin tone. A body scrub right before a massage is one of the best ways to relax and prepare your body for a massage. Benefit one, a glowing skin. One of the biggest benefits to body scrubs, particularly the salt scrub, is the glow that your skin is left with. There are different grades of salt and sea salt is the best option for a salt glow. The results for your body will depend on the type and grade of salt you use or your spa technician uses. The next benefit, is exfoliation. It might seem like an obvious benefit to mention, but body scrubs are a great way to exfoliate dead skin cells. This paves the way for fresh new cells to regenerate and leaves you looking and feeling fabulous. Planning a body scrub for exfoliating benefits is best in the fall and spring, right before you start a tan and when your tan starts to fade. Of course, exfoliating is great at any time. And if you have sensitive skin, it's better to stick with sugar or herbal body scrubs. Otherwise, salt scrubs are great for exfoliation. Benefit three, increasing flow. When you get a body scrub or give one to yourself, you are encouraging the natural flow of circulation of bodily fluids within. For the best results, a professional should recommend and apply the body scrub that is appropriate for you. When you have a professional massage therapist apply the body scrub, a massage can be incorporated. This will increase the, cor the correct circulation and flow benefits. Benefit four, improving cellulite and aging. 
There are some claims that certain types of body scrubs can actually improve the look of aging and dimpled skin from cellulite. There is no miracle cure, but it certainly wouldn't hurt to try a scrub that is enhanced with coffee. The coffee grounds are the best option to use on cellulite prone areas of the body. These types of body scrubs are great if you love the smell of coffee as well. And the final benefit is relaxation. Treating yourself to a body scrub, especially when combined with a massage, is just plain relaxing. Having a body scrub done by a professional allows you to incur the benefit without the mess or stress. Plus, when you have a choice of essential oils to add to your body scrub, the effects are even more potent. Lavender is a great choice because it's known for its relaxing qualities. But there are many other scents that you can find relaxing, so be sure to ask if essential oils can be incorporated. Contraindications. Scrubs should generally not be used on skin that is sensitive or broken, nor should they be used on acne as they can make breakouts worse. Body polishes. A body polish is a popular body treatment that exfoliates and hydrates your skin, leaving it smooth and soft. A body polish is primarily a treatment for the skin, sort of like a facial for the body, but not to be confused with a massage. It's a gentler form of exfoliation using softer granules, granules such as those found in fine blue cornmeal or finely ground natural su substances like crushed almonds or grapeseed meal. These products are not as coarse or abrasive as scrubs and glows. Clients who have fair, ruddy, thin, or fragile skin should use a polish instead of a scrub. A body polish can be done with any number of materials, like rice bran, pecan hulls, poppy seeds, oatmeal, wine, chocolate, usually mixed with some kind of skin emollient such as oil, lotion, or cream, which can be used as part of the mixture and aromic like essential oils. The body polish exfoliation is usually followed by a shower and an application of body lotion. A body polish usually takes place in a wet room. The therapist will return and start gently rubbing the exfoliant on your back, the back of your arms, the back of your legs and feet. It's the same procedure that you'll have with your scrubs. When the therapist is finished, you'll usually step into a shower and rinse off. While you're in the shower, the therapist will put clean sheets on the treatment table while you're showering and step out in the room again. You will dry off, lie face down on the treatment table underneath a chowel or sheet. Then the therapist returns and applies body lotion or oil. Some spas do body polishes in a room without a shower and remove the exfoliant with steam towels. You can get a body polish on its own, but it's often the first step in a wrap, often a seaweed or mud wrap. You can also combine a body polish with a massage. You get the body polish first because it's stimulating, whereas the massage would then calm you down. Some spas have signature treatments that combine both body polish and massage. Practitioners and clients can be allergic to any or all exfoliation substances and fluids. One of the more well-known allergies is to nuts. It is important for the practitioner to find out from clients any allergies they may have and note them on their intake form so that there is written documentation. People can develop allergies throughout their lives, therefore every time a client arrives for treatment, the practitioner should do a quick allergy update. Before any treatment is performed, the substance should be applied to a small area on the practitioner's skin before putting it on the client's skin usually the forearm, 
to see if there is an allergic reaction. Next, we'll explore body wraps. Body wraps can be used in conjunction with many different substances. Seaweed, creams, mud, clays, and peat are all commonly used materials, as well as sheets soaked in an herbal infusion. Body wraps are a popular treatment at most salons and spas. There are many types of body wrap treatments used for a variety of reasons helping clients to tone, soften the skin, remove toxins, excess inches and water in the body. Body wraps are usually made from a combination of natural minerals and herbs. Body wraps are a spa treatment that claim to detoxify the body, moisturize your skin, relax you, and in some cases, help you shed inches. A body wrap uses large, wet, or dry sheets or bandages to wrap most of the body. The typical wrap involves binding your arms, legs, torso, and neck with elastic clothes soaked in mixtures that may include rosemary, clay, eucalyptus, or other herbs. You'll feel compressed, but not suffocated, in the tight wrapping which is said to encourage you to sweat out toxins and lose excess fluid in the spaces between your cells. You may remain wrapped for 20 minutes or longer, and the total treatment time for a wrap is approximately 50 minutes from start to finish. I think it's best when a massage therapist does the body wrap because they naturally incorporate massage techniques as they apply the product. An esthetician, on the other hand, is not trained in massage. He or she is simply applying product to the skin. Once the product is on, your client is wrapped to stay warm, usually for 20 minutes. When the time is up, the client is unwrapped and the body mask has to come off. This is why they take place in wet rooms. Your clients might either jump into the shower or the therapist will rinse you off with a handheld shower or a special Vichy shower, which feels absolutely fabulous. It's like taking a shower lying down. Then you dry your client off and there's usually an application of lotion to moisturize the skin and seal in moisture. There are different types of body wraps available. Body wrap treatments are not based upon sweating or water loss to achieve their particular results. There are essentially two different types of body wraps on the market today, and both types employ a large emphasis on moisturizing, healing, and conditioning the skin. However, the primary function of the two types is drastically different. They are the hydration and dehydration wraps. The, a type of body wrap referred to as a dehydration wrap is called that because it creates a minor amount of weight loss and inch loss primarily through water elimination. These water elimination wraps are very useful for a big event when a person might like to look their best for a short period of time but the inch loss and weight loss is only temporary. This technique is similar to that which could be obtained through excessive sweating during exercise or time spent in a sauna. Industry experts will tell you that a large majority of body wraps on the market are the dehydration type wraps. So always ask what type of wrap it is. What are the after wrap instructions in regarding fluid intake and how long the results are expected to last. The next type is the hydration wraps. This type of body wraps creates inch loss in two ways. The first is by aiding the lymphatic system in its removal of stored toxins. These wraps stimulate a process called lymphatic drainage, where toxins and fatty acids from your cells are released into the capillaries and eliminated along the body's waste. 
drinking large quantities of water after this type of body wrap is common to help facilitate the detoxification and fat loss process. These wraps are also helpful to eliminate excess fluids and toxins by drawing them out through the pores of the skin. The result is an immediate and noticeable inch loss in the areas of the body where there is a large accumulation of fat, like on the hips, thighs, and stomach. You will also notice when researching this type of wrap that there are little or no claims of weight loss involved. This is because the products are being used are actually absorbed into the body and nourish the body. Since most of us do not drink enough water and our bodies are dehydrated, this type of wraps help us feel rejuvenated and energized. Many categories of wraps are available but most fall under one of three categories. These are the hot sheet wraps, cocoons, and tension wraps. Let's go over each one individually. The hot sheet body wrap. The hot sheet body wrap entails dissolving a substance such as mud, herbs or seaweed in hot water, soaking a sheet in the solution and wrapping the client with the sheet. The intention is to increase body temperature so that perspiration will occur. This rids the body of excess water weight and allows toxins to escape through the skin. The possibilities for hot sheet substances are endless. But a coffee hot sheet wrap is one example of the popular method used today. It's believed that topically applied coffee decreases water retention. Other common hot sheet substances are honey, milk, and juice. The cocoon body wrap. The cocoon body wrap requires the wrap substance to be applied directly to the exfoliated skin to ensure the best conditions for absorption. The substance is then sealed by wrapping the client in a plastic sheet, towel, or blanket. One popular type of cocoon wrap is the emollient wrap. This is intended to hydrate and soften the skin by applying a thick moisturizer such as shea butter. Others may opt for an aromatherapy cocoon. This type of wrap essentially uses essential oils intended to calm or invigorate the client. Arthritic clients are benefited by a paraffin cocoon. Paraffin traps heat so that joints are warmed which in turn reduces joint pain and stiffness. And lastly, we have the tension body wrap. Tension body wraps are the third category. And the goal of a tension wrap is to push excess fluid out of specific areas so that they will appear slimmer. To accomplish this, elastic bands or plastic sheets are tightly wrapped around the targeted areas. As with the hot sheet wraps, this results in perspiration and fluid loss but this is only a temporary water loss and not a permanent solution. Care must be taken with tension wraps to ensure the wrap is not too tight as this can result in damage to blood vessels. The popular kinds of body wraps are numerous. You have anything from algae, clay, mud, niacin, paraffin, parafango, herbal, mineral, shea butter, compression, and cryotherapy. So let's take a look at these most popular type of body wraps. The algae body wrap. Algae, which is also known as seaweed, is applied to your entire body. The algae paste is applied warm and you will be cocooned in blankets to stay warm. Algae is used to nourish and detoxify the skin. 
and one must be careful in considering this wrap if they are allergic to iodine or shellfish. Your body is slathered with a warm mixture of seaweed. You will then be cocooned in a plastic sheeting, and then you're wrapped in a heated blanket. The seaweed wrap is a great detoxifying wrap, as it is very high in minerals. This wrap nourishes the body through the use of seaweed, which contains trace minerals, trace elements, and vitamins. The treatment stimulates the lymphatic system, helps to reduce bloating, and it detoxifies. The clay body wrap. This is similar to a mud wrap. There are many different types of clay and each one is used for different therapies. However, clay is primarily used for detoxification and to diminish cellulite as it helps to rid the body of excess water. Specific aromatherapy oils may be added to the clay to not only smell good, but to also provide additional results. The Mud Body Wrap Natural marine mud mixed with aromatherapy essences enhances this holistic body wrap. The session will begin with an exfoliation and then an application, say for example, mud from the Dead Sea. The session ends with a body wrap and then the application of a gel or moisturizer to nourish the skin, relieve joint and muscle pain, and de-stress the mind. Mud, like clay, can help to pull the impurities from the body when it is drying on the body. Mud treatments are used to help with water retention and may also ease arthritis and soothe minor skin irritations. The Niacin Body Wrap. The Niacin Wrap is designed to promote circulation to break up and help rid the body of trapped toxins. This, is particularly, this particular wrap will be slathered on with a cream or moisturizing product and then wrapped firmly with a plastic film to help keep the product close to your skin. You will then relax for 20 minutes up to an hour, cocooned in blankets or towels to keep you warm. The paraffin body wraps. Paraffin is best known as an addition to a manicure or pedicure. With a manicure or pedicure, you dip your hands or feet into a wax after a lotion or cream are applied. The heat of the wax helps the lotion or cream to penetrate the skin and the wax keeps the heat in. The paraffin treatment is a useful for joint stiffness, from non-inflammatory arthritis, as well as tight muscles, ligaments, and ten tendons. Because it is effective at loosening soft tissue, it can be used before performing a massage on tight muscles and fascia. The paraffin is melted and applied to the body in a temperature ranging between 125 to 130 degrees. When using paraffin as part of a body treatment, the paraffin will be brushed on your body after a lotion or cream or oil is applied. You will then be cocooned in blankets to keep the heat in. The treatment time for the painting method requires 10 minutes to paint and the paraffin is left on for 20 to 30 minutes. The dipping method requires approximately 10 minutes of dipping time to build up the paraffin shell and it's left on for the 20 to 30 minutes. Not only does this type of body treatment have a softening and moisturizing effect, but also helps to reduce aches and pains of the muscles and joints. Many arthritis sufferers use paraffin as a daily home treatment. This treatment is very popular during cold winter months or in very dry climates. The disadvantage of using paraffin products is that it's a petroleum product, which is not natural or healthy for the body. Petroleum products are great for machines and cars, but not so good for people. The Parafango Body Wrap. Fango mud is from the rich thermal mud from the ponds of Battaglia near Padua in northern Italy. Fango means mud in Italian. 
Therapeutic use of this mud can be traced back to the 1300s and was rediscovered again in the 1900s. This body treatment is much like the paraffin wrap. This treatment uses a warmed mixture of paraffin wax and mud to help stimulate the skin and pull out toxins through the skin. It's a slow release of heat that can be left on the body longer than paraffin alone. There is no absorption of either the paraffin or fango mud by the body. When combining the paraffin with mud, you get a double whammy of a treatment. The mud helps to detoxify the body while the paraffin keeps the mud glued to you to achieve maximum results. The parafango is heated to about 120 degrees and the mixture can be painted anywhere on the body, hands, feet, shoulders, knees, back, hips, or the entire body to provide a slow release of healing warmth. The client will relax and lie still for about 45 to 60 minutes while being cocooned in blankets to keep you warm. The Herbal Body Wrap Cotton cloth, muslin, or elastic bandages are soaked in an herbal infused solution and the client is wrapped firmly and cocooned in plastic and in blankets to keep them warm. These wraps are used for skin softening and inch loss body wraps. Mineral body wraps, which are also called compression or active wraps, are the most popular for inch loss. These body wraps mostly contain calcium, minerals, potassium, and other pertinent minerals to help with detoxification. This is the wrap that uses elastic bandages that have been soaked in the mineral solution. The client is wrapped, but not too tight as to cut off circulation. And then the client will be doing light exercise for one hour while in the wrap. The bandages will help compress the fat cells. The minerals help to release the toxins in between the fat cells. And the movement keeps the lymphatic system working to help flush the system. The mineral wrap is also known as the slimming body wrap. Warm Shea Butter Body Wrap. This treatment begins with a dry brush exfoliation followed by a luxurious wrap in pure warm shea butter. After the wrap is removed, any remaining shea butter is massaged in, leaving the client skin hydrated, moisturized, and free of stress. Compression body wrap. This is by far the most popular body wrap treatment for inch loss. This wrap can be easily classified as a mummy wrap. Though most of all body wraps require some kind of wrapping or cocooning, the compression wrap always uses elastic bandages to reach, achieve maximum results. Although the products used for this wrap can vary from aloe vera, clay, herbal, and mineral, the mineral body wrap being the most popular of this type of compression wrap. Cryotherapy wrap. A cold wrap treatment designed to control excess fluid in the hip, leg, and thigh, or shoulder, or arm. Cryotherapy is used mainly to help with fluid retention. Because of the coolness of this type of wrap, the circulatory system is stimulated, helping the body to rid itself of the excess fluids. Although this wrap is very effective, if you have a low tolerance for cold, then this is probably the most uncomfortable wrap available. Body wraps draw toxins from the body and help tone skin by removing excess fluid and toxins from the body. The treatment entails wrapping your torso, arms, and legs using mud or other organic ingredients. A comfortable level of heat is applied and together with the compression provided by the wrap, this treatment promotes sweating and enables extra fluid trapped in the small spaces between the tissues to be expelled. Body wraps activate the lymphatic system and thereby promote detoxification and boost the immune system. There are benefits to getting a body wrap. 
Treatments that include mud, clay, seaweed, are detoxifiers and help rid the body of any bad toxins through the stimulation of the metabolism. Treatments that include lotions and creams such as shea butter have hydrating effects and can leave the skin feeling soft and smooth. Body wraps are great for relaxation and skin rejuvenation. Some things to watch out for with a body wrap. Don't expect a body wrap to be a massage. You can get both treatments, body wrap and massage, or look for signature treatments that include a scrub, body wrap, and massage. You don't want to shave or wax just prior to a body treatment. That's not recommended. Or if you have claustrophobia, this may not be the right treatment for you. You might be left alone during the treatment, so if that bothers you, ask before you book the service. The contraindications of body wraps are long. To understand and explain contraindication to wraps and masks, and in circumstances where written medical permission cannot be obtained, the client has to sign an informed consent form stating that the treatments and its effects have been fully explained to them and confirm that they are willing to proceed without permission from their general practitioner, their doctor, or a specialist. And the type of contraindications include pregnancy, cardiovascular conditions, hemophilia, edema, osteoporosis, arthritis, operations recently, any type of asthma, any type of pinched nerve, spastic conditions, kidney infections, slip disc, whiplash, cancer, um, contraindications that restrict treatment is if you have a fever, contagious or infectious disease, if you're under the influence of recreational drugs or alcohol, if you have diarrhea and vomiting, any type of skin disease, varicose veins, inflammation, localized swelling or undiagnosed bumps or lumps, pregnancies, cuts, bruises, abrasions, scar tissue, two years for major surgery and six months for a small scar is usually the standard. If you have a sunburn, a hormonal implant, if you have a hematoma, hernia, any type of ulcer, or after any heavy meal, or any conditions affecting the neck. Aromatherapy. Aromatherapy is a widely used term for a wide range of traditional therapies that use essential oils. These may include massaging oils, oils in clay, mud, or any topical application that uses pure essential oils. The essential oils are either absorbed through the skin or inhaled. Aromatherapy is a type of alternative medicine that uses essential oils and other ar aromatic plant compounds which are aimed at improving a person's health or mood. The essential oils used in aromatherapy have a different composition compared to other herbal products because the distillation used in aromatherapy recovers the lighter photomolecules, phytomolecules. It is believed that the inhalation of essential oils stimulate the part of the brain connected to smell. The olfactory system, a signal is sent to the limbic system of the brain that controls the emotions and retrieves learned memories. This causes chemicals to be released which make the person feel relaxed, calm, or even stimulated. If the aromatherapy includes massage, the effect is to further relax the person. The essential oils are said to have a direct pharmacological pharmacological effect. Aromatherapists claim that there is a synergy between the body and aromatic oils. Essential oils, phytonicides, and other natural volatile organic compounds work differently. When targeting our sense of smell, they activate the limbic system and the emotional centers of the brain. When applied topically, right onto the skin, 
they activate thermal receptors and destroy microbes and fungi. Internal application may stimulate the immune system. The application of aromatherapy. Aromatherapy in the spa is generally applied in one of three ways. You can have aerial diffusion, direct inhalation, and topical application. Aerial diffusion is when the oil evaporates into the air. The aim is to give the air a specific fragrance or to disinfect it. Direct inhalation is when the person breathes the evaporating oils straight in. This is commonly used for respiratory disinfection, decongestion, as well as for psychological benefits. And lastly is topical application. This is when it's applied directly onto the skin. Commonly, this is used for body wraps, body scrubs, skin polishing, massage, baths, and therapeutic skin care. The common ar aromatherapy oils are as follows. You have basil, and this is used to sharpen concentration and alleviate some of the symptoms of depression. Also used to relieve headaches and migraines and should be avoided during pregnancy. Bergamot, said to be useful for the urinary tract and digestive tract, and when combined with eucalyptus oil, it's said to be good for the skin and skin problems caused by stress as well as skin affected by chickenpox. Black pepper, it's commonly used for stimulating the circulation, muscular aches and pains and bruises. Citronella oil is a relative of lemongrass and is commonly used as an insect repellent. Clove oil, a topical analgesic or painkiller, commonly used for toothache. It's also used as an antispasmodic and it also helps to prevent vomiting and nausea and prevents gas in the gut. Eucalyptus is often used for relief of the airways for people who have cold or flu, commonly combined with peppermint. Geranium oil. This is commonly used as a diuretic. It makes you get rid of water. An astringent. It draws together or constricts body tissues and is effective in stopping the flow of blood and other secretions. And an antiseptic. Next, we have jasmine. It's said to have aphrodisiac qualities. Lavender oil, commonly used as an antiseptic for minor cuts and burns, also used to help people relax. It's said to relieve headaches and migraine symptoms and is also used to help people with insomnia. Then you have lemon oil. It's used to give the person a mood lift, also said to be effective for relieving symptoms of stress and depression. Sandalwood oil. Some say this has an aphrodisiac quality. Tea tree oil, said to have an antimicrobial, antiseptic, and disinfectant quality, commonly used in mouth, ris mouth rinses. Thyme oil, said to help fatigue, nervousness, and stress. And yarrow oil, used for cold and influenza symptoms, and it's said to help reduce joint inflammation. Important points to remember when using essential oils is to make sure that they're used on clean skin because clean skin absorbs better than dirty skin. The warmth and the massage helps in the absorption of the essential oil. You want to cover the skin after a massage so it aids in the absorption of the oil. And the layer of the skin epidermis can act as a reservoir and can remain there for hours. The amount of oil absorbed through the inhalation will be increased by deep and rapid breathing. And the absorption of substances through the nasal mucosa have easier access to the central nervous system than absorbed directly through the skin. Here are some of the suggested uses and the quantities of essential oils for specific purposes. When used for inhalation, you want to place anywhere from five to 10 drops of essential oil 
on the center flap of a rest cover, on the corner of a pillowcase, or on a tissue placed on an arm shelf while the client is prone. When used for diffusion, a diffuser is used to dispense essential oils in the air. You want to add between 10 and 15 drops of essential oil to a diffuser, and you can add more drops as needed. As a room mister, add anywhere from 2 to 10 drops per 1 ounce of water in a spray bottle, and you always want to shake it before using. In a bath, for an immersion bath, you want to add 5 to 10 drops of essential oil in a tub for a single user. Be sure the water is moving while the client is in the water. For a steam bath, you want to add 5 to 10 drops in the water well. In compresses, you want to add 2 to 5 drops of essential oil to a small dish of water. You drench the washcloth in the scented water. You wring it out and apply to the client. As a massage lubricant, you want to add between 15 and 20 drops of essential oil to one ounce of a fat-based lubricant for a full body massage. This gives about a 2.5 to 3% dilution rate. For massaging a localized area, for example if you have a muscle spasm in the shoulder, a slightly stronger dilution can be used. So you could use between 12 and 15 drops of essential oil in 1.5 ounce of carrier oil or lubricant for this purpose. And finally, in a body treatment product, when using essential oils in body masks or body scrubs, you want to mix the essential oil in a carrier and then add it to the body treatment product. The contraindications. It's important to follow the product instructions carefully. Concentrated products may be poisonous before dilution and should be handled with care. If you have any of the following conditions, you should be extra careful and cautious about aromatherapy. For example, if a client has, has an allergy or allergies, if a person suffers from hay fever, which is a type of allergy, if you suffer from asthma, if you have skin conditions like eczema or psoriasis, you want to be, be extremely cautious if you suffer, suffer from epilepsy or hypertension, which is high blood pressure, or deep vein thrombosis, if the person's breastfeeding or if the person is pregnant. Aromatherapy does sometimes have side effects. However, they tend to be very mild and do not last very long. These may include nausea, headaches, and some allergic reactions. Skin sensitivity to sunlight. It's important to note that essential oils derived from citrus may make the skin more sensitive to ultraviolet light, making the person more susceptible to sunburn. And some oils may change the effectiveness of conventional medicines. If you're not sure, you check with a, certif with a qualified pharmacist or your doctor. Aromatherapy can be used as treatments for such ailments as anxiety, stress, insomnia, muscle aches, body aches, headaches, any type of circulation problems, digestive, menstrual, or menopausal problems. And finally, for depression. There was a study found that women with depression had their sense of smell affected. It added that women who received aromatherapy and suffered from depression may benefit from this type of treatment. Some of the most common therapeutic uses of the essential oils would be eucalyptus, which is widely used for respiratory congestion, and it helps bring comfort when experiencing loss and grief. This oil also is used during periods of physical and mental fatigue and exhaustion. Lavender, the most widely used essential oil, it combats insomnia, calms and balances the mind and emotions, and helps ease irritability. Lemon is used, added energy to the mind and body and a sense of clarity, which makes it useful during times of indecisiveness. Lemon oil may irritate the skin, so be careful. Peppermint oil adds a sense of excitement and enthusiasm 
and it's a great for a pick-me-up or during a long period of depression. This oil is used for headaches, nausea, and motion sickness, and is not recommended to be used during pregnancy. Rose geranium. It's relaxing and soothing and can enhance and assist in confidence building. Rosemary. Aiding in stimulation of mental clarity, concentration, and memory. Rosemary promotes cerebral activity. It brings balance by helping detoxify the mind and body. And you don't want to use it during pregnancy or clients with seizure disorders. Sandalwood oil promotes deep relaxation, abates depression, and quiets the mind and emotions. Tangerine oil is said to clear away negativity and opens up the heart by inspiring sensitivity and empathy. It helps calm an overactive nervous system. Tea tree oil, it acts as an antiseptic, so it can be used to disinfect contaminated items. It also helps strengthen the immune system. And Lang Lang, this oil calms the nervous system, eases depression, and reduces frustration. Used topically, it can irritate the skin. The benefits of using aromatherapy in the body, it reduces stress and the physical, emotional, mental, and energetic impacts of stress. It can uplift the spirits. It can improve concentration and mental clarity. It can achieve and maintain balance, relaxation, and help it re improve sleep. Relieves muscle and joint aches, stiffness, and tension. It can support respiratory functioning. It can act as a deodorizer and a refresher. It's a, nat it's a natural home and garden maintenance product. It can promote and support healthy skin and address common skin conditions such as dryness, oiliness, acne, wrinkles, to name a few. It can reduce occasional nausea. It can support other he healing modalities, whether conventional or complementary. It can support meditation and other forms of spiritual development. It's a pampering for oneself and the preference for personalized nat natural products and treatments using aromatherapy have great benefit. Standards of practice, sanitation. Preparing the treatment area by using disinfecting cleaning materials, the massage equipment, the freshly laundered linens, towels, and a blanket is a must. In the treatment area, to ensure that the room and equipment surfaces have been cleaned according to the requirements of the communicable disease control as defined by the infection control for regulated professional documents. You want to only use sheets and towels that have been freshly laundered, the linens and towels and blankets that come in contact with the client have not been used by any prior client, and the linens used for draping will allow for full coverage of the client during the entire session. For safety, the linens and pillows that do not interfere with the client's ability to get on and off the table, any obstacle or substance that could make the floor slippery is removed from the treatment room to prevent accidental falls, and the equipment must be properly maintained and that manufacturer's instructions are followed correctly. Personal hygiene. Understanding hygiene is essential for massage therapists to keep themselves safe from infectious diseases and to keep them from spreading them between their clients. The main goal is to discourage and prevent growth or spread of pathogens and allergens. Sanitizing and disinfecting your massage office consists of keeping your table, face cradle, sheets, bottles of lotion oil, hydrotherapy equipment, as well as carpets, walls, and counters clean and sanitary. Clients may also have allergies and sensitivities to mold and other scents or laundry detergents that you use, so keep using hypoallergenic products if you can. After every massage, you must wash your hands and forearms to keep them free from bacteria. Properly manicured skills will keep nail beds clean and smooth and not leave scratches on clients. And safety. You want to make sure that the linens and pillows do not interfere with the client's ability to get on and off the table. And to make sure any obstacles or substances that could make the floor slippery is removed. 
Your responsibility is to the equipment to be properly maintained and sanitized and all manufacturer's instructions are followed correctly. This is especially important for any heated therapeutic uses such as paraffin, parafango, hot stones, and towels. Here are some resources that help me with this presentation. Feel free to look them up at any time. And congratulations. Now that you have finished this presentation, you must complete the final exam that was sent by attachment. Make sure your name and license number are on the bottom of the exam the way you want it to be printed on your e-certificate. Email the completed exam to kajini.d at gmail.com. To satisfy your spa therapy part one for the massage therapist online class requirement, you must achieve a score of 70% or higher. An e-certificate will be emailed to you at the email address you provided upon registration. If you have any additional questions, please contact me at kajini.d at gmail.com. Also, check out these other NCBTMB approved continuing ed distant learning classes for massage therapy. For a full description, please go to the URL shown above. We also have acupressure for the massage therapist, aromatherapy, ethics, growing your bodywork practice, nutrition, planning for the luxury destination spa interview, spa therapies part one, which is what this is, spa therapies part two, which is a continuation, sports massage, whole body cleansing for the massage therapist, understanding chakras and improving your eyesight with Qigong. Those are not NCBTMB approved, but also available for your own edification. Payment is handled directly through PayPal, and once you've registered and paid, you'll be taken to the class. Listen to the class as many times as you like, complete the exam, return it via email, and when you receive a passing score of 70% or higher, you receive an e-certificate of achievement via email. If you have any questions, please email us at bewell at gmail.com. Beacon Wellness Arts is an approved by the NCBTMB as a continuing education provider. My number is 450919-09 and is also sponsored by the NCBTMB to teach New York Florida State Board of Massage Therapy number 50-14392 with CE Broker, Texas, Oregon, Washington State, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Illinois, North Carolina, LMTs, continuing ed, as well as several other states that require NCB TMB continuing ed approval. Thank you for this presentation.